Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh, and for today's video, I'm going to be responding to an email that I received at adam at thefreedomline.com. And please feel free to hit me up there anytime for whatever reason, whether it's about the campaign, ideas for content, or just fun questions like this. Adam, saw you on Fox Business with the judge the other day. Good show. You used a phrase I've never heard before. Localization is the cure for polarization. As someone who's heard you explain localization years ago, it had obvious and profound implications. I don't want to assume, though. Could you explain what you meant by that and give the appropriate background for someone who's never heard of your concept of localization? Thanks, Nathan. Well, Nathan, thanks for writing. I actually never had used that phrase before until right before that show in a conversation with one of the producers. And thank you, Chelsea, for the brain spark there. And it was just, someone had tipped me off to say, look, you're going to talk to the Fox News audience. Polarization is kind of one of the hot topics and your message on that might be unique. So just try to work that in and, and, and just the phrase, localization is the cure for polarization came up and was so poignant and profound. And where we are today with polarization in the United States, I gotta say, first of all, it's largely exaggerated in the sense that people on the left and people on the right find the craziest people from the other side and hold them up as examples and say to their bases, look, we're not the crazy ones, they're the crazy ones. And, and there's a lot of that that's that just a factor of where we are with technology and development of the uh, conversation on the internet. And there's come to be a kind of resignation towards this polarization. And it doesn't have to be that way. And if, if you just step back for a second and think about the animosity that we are experiencing in, in the political conversation today in America, it doesn't really apply to foreigners. We just sort of accept that they can have different opinions than us and they can live differently under different governments. Hey, how about that? And if you step back and, and, and see that, you realize that the reason we have this polarization in America is because we've been conditioned to accept that we are going to be forced into a centralized system, a one-size-fits government obviously profiteers over everybody else kind of solution, then we end up having to meet anybody who's of a significantly different political ideology from us as the enemy, as someone to be opposed, as someone who we have to fight over what this centralized solution is going to be. And of course, it doesn't have to be that way. Localization is the everybody gets what they want strategy. It's about taking governments apart from the top down. In the United States, we can start with the federal, then go states, then counties, and then at counties, we're getting pretty close to communities, but obviously you're gonna see cities break off. But when you get it down to that local enough level where an individual can break off people can start a new community where there isn't the ability of large centralized governments to force factions into a centralized authority kind of system, then we can meet each other with respect when we meet people of different political opinions. Instead of meeting them as implied enemies, we can just say, oh, wow, that's, that's how you want to live. That sounds great. That's, I, I hope you enjoy that. Or that doesn't sound great. I'm never going to want to live there but I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that and, and best of luck to you. And, and just this simple uh, adjustment about how we think about government and governance in general, to say not, you know, government should this, that, or the other, but rather, if you're going to have anything called government, it's gotta be voluntary. How do we get to that point? Again, localization, it just solves more problems than you can count. When you get government down to that level, when it becomes voluntary, but even before it becomes voluntary, we radically increase the power of your vote and decrease the power of political bribes. When we reject the idea that our ideas can be forced on other people through government, we get to meet each other with love and respect and appreciation instead of polarization. 
the idea of polarization as we know it today will soon be as laughably obsolete as doctor prescribed cigarettes and racially segregated water fountains. So it's true that there are opportunities within a centralized government framework to fight for decentralization of government, but that's not really the same as localization. And as long as you allow this central power structure to exist, it can always grow back into a monstrosity. But fortunately, people are waking up. People are realizing, hey, maybe people in San Francisco shouldn't be passing laws for people in Dallas. And it's just kind of obvious when you put it that way and you realize that nobody should be forced into any system at all. And if you fight inch by inch, it's gonna grow back faster. The monstrosity is gonna come back. And sometimes you just have to start by chopping off the head of the beast. And that gets me to one of the most important reasons that I'm running for president on the platform of dissolving the federal government. No one else is doing it. Adam vs. The Man is made possible by people who care about freedom, like our Patreon supporters whose monthly contributions get them perks and exclusive content. Find out how you can help by going to patreon.com slash Adam vs. The Man. Adam vs. The Man is made possible with support from SmartCash. Check out smartcash.cc to find out more about this powerful, business-focused cryptocurrency that is fast, easy to use, and community-centric. SmartCash is designed to be securely used for day-to-day -day transactions and put the currency back in cryptocurrency.